So all of the cases that we've seen so far, we've had a monomial on the bottom, one term. So now we're going to be looking at other polynomials living down there. So how do we find those least common denominators? It's the same story. We need a factor, but instead of breaking it down you know, into constants being multiplied together, we have to look at what polynomials multiplying together will give us what we're working towards. So down here, first term. I want to factor a squared minus 1. It's got two terms, so the first question should be, is it a difference of squares? And it is, so how does it factor? a plus 1, a minus 1. We need to break it down as far as we can go, both in the top and in the bottom. We care about the bottom for now because we need to build the LCD with it. The top will eventually factor again. So, bottom of the second term. Common between these two that we can take out is a factor of a. And when we do that, what are we left with? a plus 1. So, as we look, common between these guys. Well, they already share in common, and what are we missing? So we want to build that least common denominator. So let's look. What is this one missing that this other one has? So we've already taken into account that a plus 1. We're missing that factor of a. So again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And we have to do the same thing over here. So let's look. What is this one missing? that the other one has. Factor of a minus 1. And again, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Because what are we multiplying by in each of these cases? 1. Change what it looks like, not changing it all together. So let's start simplifying in the numerator. I've got 2a times a. So I'm looking at 2a squared over my LCD, and if I leave it in the factored form, in the end, I can look and see if I can simplify any farther. If we multiply it all out, we're going to have to refactor it in the end. Don't make more work for yourself. And numerator of my last term, 1 times anything is itself, so we get out a minus 1, all over the same denominator now, which is what we were working towards. Since we have common denominators, let's combine those terms. So what are we looking at now? Up top, I've got 2a squared plus a minus 1. And that's all over a, a plus 1, a minus 1. So we need to factor the thing up top so we can see if we can cancel anything out with our denominator. If we had multiplied out the denominator, we'd have to be refactoring it right now. Pain in the butt. So let's look up top. 2 and 1 are both prime. So we just have to figure out the signs. And we still have that same denominator. Hasn't changed yet. So what sign combination do we need? When I add my two terms, I need it to be positive. So my larger combination between the outer two and the inner two needs to be positive. So which one is bigger? Two times one, or one, forgot to write it there, one times a. So two is bigger than one, so this combination needs to be positive, and this combo needs to be negative. So that when we foil it all out, we get two a minus a, it gives us that middle term, and when we multiply those last two, we get out our negative one. So sometimes it's easier just to do the guessing and checking real quick, because it kind of foils itself when everything is prime. So now that we have everything being multiplied together up top and down below, is there anything common that we can um, get rid of in both? A plus 1 divided by A plus 1. Same thing divided by the same thing is 1. Is there anything else? There isn't. So up top, what are we left with? 2a minus 1 over a times a minus 1. 
And when we leave it in the factored form, it's the easiest to see, did we miss anything? Can we go any farther? No in this case. Now we've got trinomials down there, a little bit bigger. But still, same concept. We need to factor everything down there. So let's see. First term, numerator isn't going to change. And I have a 1 out on the front. So I know I'm going to break into an x and an x on my terms. And what about those signs? I need it to multiply to be positive and add to be positive. So both of these are going to be positive. And what terms do we need? I need to break up 30 into things that multiply to 30, add to 11. So what do we need? 6 and 5. Same story on the second piece. Again, I've got a 1 out on the front, so I know it's going to be an x and an x. And what about those signs? Same story, everything's positive. What factors of 20 will multiply to 20 and add to 9? What do we need? 5 and 4. All right. Since everything is factored, let's start to build that least common denominator. So starting with the first, what is this one missing that this other one has? Factor of x plus 4. And again, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do where? Up top. Same story over here. What is this one missing that this other one has? Factor of x plus 6. Again, whatever we do to the bottom, have to do to the top. So it's going to be a little bit more work to simplify these guys, but we can handle it. So what do we have up top over here? I've got x times that quantity, x plus 4. And multiplication is commutative. I'm allowed to switch the order around. And we got that all over our LCD. I'm going to be lazy and write it like that. And over here, I'm adding negative 5 times that quantity. So in reality, I'm subtracting 5 times x plus 6. And it's all over that LCD as well. So we can write it as one fraction now. And let's work on simplifying up top, because eventually we need to factor it and see if anything can simplify. So in that numerator, what are we looking at? I've got x squared plus 4x. And from the second term, negative 5 times x gives me minus 5x. And negative 5 times positive 6 gives me negative 30. That's still all over my LCD. We need to keep it in account, but not necessarily write it out every single time. In the end, we'll put it back in. So as we combine our two terms, in the middle here, what are we looking at? Got x squared minus x minus 30 all over my LCD. And we need to take that numerator and factor it. So I know I have a 1 out on the front. It's going to give me an x and an x. And I need two terms, two factors, that are going to multiply to negative 30, add to negative 1. So we know we need factors that are close together, 6 and 5, and which one needs to be negative? The bigger one, negative 6, positive 5. And now we want to put our LCD back in because we want to look at those factors and see what we can cancel. So I've got x plus 4, x plus 5, and x plus 6. So common, top and bottom, what can we get rid of? x plus 5 over x plus 5 is 1. And can we cancel out these two? No, why not? So we've got a negative up here and a positive down there. They have to match exactly. So in the end, what are we left with? What's our answer? In the numerator, I have x minus 6, and down below, I've got those two factors, x plus 4 and x plus 6. And if we leave it in that factored form, it's easiest to see, did we make any mistakes? Is there still something left that I can cancel out? No. But we want to check. Leave it in the factored form.
So this next one was for you to try. And what did you notice about those denominators? We can't factor them any farther. They're already broken down. So we just have to ask, what am I missing over here that this other one has? But the thing to remember with these kinds of expressions is to group together what comes together. So we don't make the mistake of not distributing. Because it's that entire quantity that comes together. It's got to stay together. So let's look. What is this one missing that my other factor has? That entire thing, x plus 8. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So when I simplify up here, what had to happen? I have to FOIL it out since I have a quantity times a quantity. And over here, to build our LCD, what is this one missing that the other one has? Factor of x plus 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So let's start to simplify. Again, we have to FOIL out these binomial products to simplify them. So let's work on the first. I've got x squared and minus 2x plus 8x minus 16. And I'm adding on the rest of this factor. So we can continue on our little string here. What are we getting? x squared plus 3x plus 7x plus 21. And that's all over our LCD that we were dealing with. x plus 3, x plus 8. Could be lazy and write LCD down there if you really want to. So we need to combine those like terms up top and see if we can factor. So how many x squareds do I have? I've got one here, one there, so I've got two x squareds. And I've got a whole bunch of x factors to combine. So I've got eight, and I'm taking away two, so I've got six over here, and another ten. So six and ten gives me sixteen factors of x. And I've got negative sixteen, and positive 21. So we're left with a positive 5. And we still have that denominator, whoop, x plus 3 and x plus 8. All right, so are we done there? Did you try to factor a little bit farther? So it's a quick way to check and see if we can factor that numerator. Let's multiply a and c together and act as if we were going to do that AC method. So my A value is 2, C value is 5. That gives me 10. Can I break up 10 in any way that when I add the factors together, I get positive 16? So if I do 1 and 10, do I add it, do I get to 16? No. 2 and 5 are my only other options. It'll multiply to give me that, but if I add it, does it give me 16? No. So what does that tell me about this one? It's not going to factor nicely and we don't have the methods yet. So we're all done. We can't factor the numerator, so we can't cancel out any common factors. There aren't any. This very last example is kind of a special case, but we've seen it before. We just have to be careful when we break up those factors down below. So let's see. We don't have common denominators right now. We need them, so let's start factoring. Down below of my first term, that is a difference of squares. So it breaks up into x plus 5, x minus 5. Order doesn't matter, you could flip it around. And in the denominator over here, what is common between these two that I can take out of both? Factor of 2. And when I do that, what am I left with? 5 minus So as we start to look between these two denominators, we need to build common ones. And what do you notice? What about this factor that we've just made and this one over here? They are, what is our term for that? Opposites. Because I have the same factors that are involved, x's and 5's, 
but they're opposite signs. It's positive x, negative x, negative 5, positive 5. So we could build our least common denominators, keeping the factors as they are now, but it's going to be bigger than necessary. So what could I take out of one of these factors, it doesn't matter to which, to make them match? They differ by a factor of what? Negative 1. So I'm going to take a factor of negative 1 out of that term, because I like to see x written first. So nothing's going to change over here. This is going to be exactly the same. But of my denominator over here, I'm also going to factor out a negative in addition to the 2. So what changes with these signs? I'm going to get out negative 5 and positive x. And addition is commutative, so I can change that order around. And I'm looking at x minus 5. And we could always distribute it back in and make sure that we get up to our original. And we will. So now, it's a little bit easier to see that we actually have a factor in common. That quantity, x minus 5. That helps us, because then we're going to have a smaller LCD. So let's look. Over here, what are we missing that this factor has? We need negative 2, and whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And over here, what is this one missing that the other one has? Factor of x plus 5. Whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. So let's start simplifying. Up top in my first term, what do I have? negative 2x all over my LCD. And what do I have for my second term? Plus 3 times x plus 5 all over my LCD. So we have common denominators now, which is the point, and we need to simplify up top. So what are we looking at? We've got negative 2x, and let's get rid of those parentheses. 3 times x gives me 3x, and 3 times 5, 15. That's still all over our LCD. So as we combine our like terms up top, what are we looking at? Between those two, I've got one factor of x and 15. And we'll go ahead and write in our LCD to see if anything cancels. So I've got negative 2, x minus 5, x plus 5. So as we look at the end, is there anything in common up top and down below that we can cancel out? No. But when we leave it in that factored form, it's the easiest to see.